So now in this video we're going to use the light dependent resistor to control a 555 timer wired as an inverting Schmidt trigger. So we'll uh, talk about that coming up. But in any case, we have a bright enough light here where the output is low. So actually it's raising the uh, voltage enough to keep the voltage low. Uh, over there, it's uh, inverting. If I cover the light dependent resistor, now we dropped the voltage enough, it went down for the signal that the output went high. It went up as high as this uh, can provide right there. So there's also a, a Schmidt trigger effect. So I'm gonna dim the uh, lamp a uh, bit. I think that's enough right there. You can see that uh, it's still bright enough, it holds the output low, but if I cover the light dependent resistor, it goes high. Now if I release it though, it stays high. That's because there's a middle ground region where the output stays in whatever region it is in. So I turned it brighter and you can see it got uh, a low output. We turn the lamp off completely and you can see the output goes high right there. So now this is going to be a quick introduction to the 555 timer. That's what uh, we are using there. I'm using the NE555 if you got the micro A. 555 should work uh, pretty much like the same LM. 555 is a bit different, uh, but these are the two most common. So in any case, there is the uh, pin layout. We'll get to what those pins do a little bit later, but there you can see the physical component. Here is the numbering system. So when you look at the schematic, you'll see numbers right there. Usually it's a, a box shape uh, with the part number written in there. and uh, so we got the divots on top, top left pin is pin one, work your way down. When you get to the bottom, you jump across and work your way up. That's how integrated circuits are numbered. So now I turn the power off to the board, but first thing we're gonna do is wire up the pins that we need to uh, power this. So pin number eight right there is VCC. That is the positive supply. So VCC is commonly used to indicate an unknown voltage for transistor-based circuits. Uh, bipolar junction transistor which are within the integrated circuit and uh, so there's a wide range of voltages you can do but VCC means the positive side so pin number one is uh, ground right there that is the negative supply so that's how we power it and how it also looks for one-third and two-thirds supply voltage as long as you don't uh, attach anything to pin number five or you could put a little capacitor it uh, doesn't matter it will hold a, a voltage, but uh, in any case, we're not going to worry about that too much. Now, we have another uh, pin there, pin 4. That's the reset pin. We don't want it to reset. If you connect that to ground, it resets. It picks up stray signals in the air as well, which will bring it close enough to uh, reset quite often. And uh, so, we will just put a pin to the positive supply that tells it not to do anything right there. We have... Also, just another simple jumper from a 6 to 2 right there. That's going to give them the same voltage. They will always have the same voltage. This is just a jumper that I made. And uh, pin 2 waits for one third or less of the supply voltage. Pin 6 waits for two thirds or more of the supply voltage. So between one and uh, two thirds supply voltage, they won't change the output at all. Pin 2 is the trigger pin and pin 6 is the threshold pin if you want to go by their name. So now before we look at the signal that changes the output let's look at the output. So we are uh, gonna output 3 there. I'm gonna take this uh, white jumper and extend it to another board. So we could extend it wherever we want onto the same board but I think this will make it easier to see the completed circuit for the purposes of this video. Of course, uh, an actual circuit, you wanna kinda keep things tighter, but I want everybody to see what's going on a little bit better. So, pin three. Now, we have from the positive supply, 1K resistor and a blue LED. Of course, you have to put the LED in the right direction. So, short lead the cathode, that's the bar there, is to the jumper right there, the output. Long lead the anode is up one row, and then we're going to take a 1000 ohm resistor right there to the positive supply. And the reason why is we want the blue LED to light up when the output is low. I'm color coding this. So that's ground basically. You can see a current path. And it does a really good job connecting to ground right there. The 555 timer. The uh, red LED, and I uh, forgot to move that resistor it looks like. The uh, red LED, again we're just color coding it. We still need the anode more positive. 
cathode, the short lead, uh, more negative. Long lead is the anode and a 220 ohm resistor. So it will light up. As you can see, we got five volts coming to the LED and then going to ground. Let's add that uh, resistor to ground right there. And uh, so there you can see why the red LED lights up when the output is more positive. And uh, so hopefully you can see that there to the uh, cathode and then to the uh, negative supply. So we color coded again, they're not lit up right now because the breadboard power is off. I turned off the power supply. And so, like I said, blue will let us know when it's uh, low, it will light up. And when the output is high, the red LED will light up. So now we're gonna work on the part of the circuit that gives the signal right there. In fact, I'm gonna turn the power on and uh, you're gonna see that uh, this is like an antenna. It's picking up a signal so it's bouncing around the voltage those are actually flipping back and forth really rapidly so we're going to take the uh, light dependent uh, resistor there and i'm using the 5528 i have a light dependent resistor kit with different values and uh, the last two numbers the higher the number the more resistance it has at a, a certain amount of light and uh, lower number means less resistance at that same amount of light so in any case there you can see we haven't added uh, this resistor yet so no matter what we're going to have, no matter what the light level, we're going to have 5 volts at those two pins right there. So that is a high input. It's 5 volts above the 2 thirds volt. So there's a low output. We talked about that earlier. You can see the blue LED is lit up. Doesn't matter how dark I make this. So we're going to add a resistor there to help pull the voltage down based on the also the resistance of the light dependent resistor. So there is no formula. I don't have any easy solution why I'm using 4,700 ohms, 4.7 kilo ohms. I just grabbed uh, different resistors and tried them out till I found one that uh, I thought worked good for this video. And uh, so you would just adjust the value for the circuit you got within the limitations of the component. But there you can see we got it dark enough now. We're basically, we're eliminating the uh, light dependent resistor it has so much resistance now that the input really only sees this path uh, to ground a low input which leads to a high output it is inverted so there's things we could do to uh, switch that I may do this next video but uh, all we have to do is that if we want it dark we want the opposite uh, signal there we go I'm going to ground now with the light dependent resistor instead of the positive supply and I'm kind of blocking this I didn't think ahead of time there so I'm going to go up to the uh, positive supply there with the uh, resistor now you can see the light is uh, keeping the output high instead of low and if we get it dark enough we uh, there's too much light going through my finger there we go so you uh, kind of pick up these things as you uh, practice with these circuits that's why you uh, build them and uh, practice them even though they're not doing anything productive I know that from earlier testing that I could still get enough light through my finger where blocking it with my finger uh, won't change it but uh, any case uh, that's it I thought I would show that I was thinking of making a completely different video for uh, showing that I may still do that we'll see how well this video does but uh, any case that's it thanks for watching Make sure you check out one of the other videos that I'm posting on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.